Every organism have a complex body and are made up of different parts. For example, flesh, blood, bones, nerve, muscle in case of animals, whereas fruits, leaves, birds, etc. in case of plants. The mentioned structures are physiologically and functionally different from one another. Yet, they are made up of, they are composed of a common unit, a tiny unit. Now the question arises, what are these tiny units? Hello students, this is Ms. Devangana Roy and today we are going to learn about the cell. The cell is the basic, structural and functional unit of life. It is the smallest part of an organism which is capable of independent existence and to perform physiological functions. Every cell has its own lifespan. The old and the weak cells are continuously being replaced by the new cells. The cells are small, they are microscopic and cannot be seen by the naked eye. The study of cell would not have been possible unless man had invented the magnifying aids with the help of microscope. The first microscope was designed by Leeuwenhoek. All his microscope consisted of a single biconvex lens and we commonly term as the simple microscope. Robert Hooke, an English scientist, came forward and designed another type of microscope and his microscope was made up of two lenses in order to amplify the magnification power. Later on, electron microscope was discovered which helped in for the studies of cell, uh, which helped in knowing the unknown facts of cell. Now let us look into the cell theory. The cell theory put forwards three major points. One, cell is the structural unit of our life. Two, it is the functional unit. Third, cells arises from pre-existing cells. Now let us look into its explanation. Structural unit. If we take a frog body or a plant body and examine it under the microscope, we will see that they are made up of the common cell structure. They are made up of the common cells. Next, functional unit. Whatever activities takes place in the plant body or in the animal body is because of the existence of the cell. The frog can germ, jump because of the muscle contraction. Next, cells die and are replaced. The mango tree or the frog body is made up of millions and millions of cells. These cells, the or other Old and the weak cells are continuously being replaced by the new cells. Now we will discuss about the components of a cell. Different kinds of cells have special differences, yet share the common plan. This is termed as the generalized cell. It includes three parts, the cell membrane, cytoplasm and the nucleus. Cell organelles are little organs. Most part of the cell have definite structure definite function and definite shape. They are termed as cell organelles or the little organs. They share the same status like organs share inside the animal body or the plant body. Now let us discuss about the parts of cell, their main function and their chief characteristic. First we will discuss about the plasma membrane. Plasma membrane is the outermost structure of an animal cell. It is a selective membrane which allows only selective materials to pass across it. It is a thin living membrane made up of fine pores and the structure is made up of lipoprotein. The chief function of the plasma membrane is it maintains the shape of the cell and regulates the entry of certain ions and solutes into the cell. Now we will talk about the cell wall. The cell wall is a rigid structure surrounding the plasma membrane. It is freely permeable and is made up of cellulose. Its function include, it provides shape and support to the cell and allow the substances present in the solution to uh, freely enter and leave the cell without any hindrance. Next comes the cytoplasm. The part of the cell inside the plasma membrane excluding the nucleus is the cytoplasm. It consists of a mixture of water soluble organic and inorganic substances and cell organelles or little organ. Its function include it performs all the metabolic activities 
because the cell organelles are present in this side of the cell. Next is the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is the irregular network of tubular double membrane. It may be smooth or rough. The functions include it forms the supportive framework for the cell. It also helps in the synthesis and transport of protein and fat. Next is mitochondria. Mitochondria may be of various shapes but usually bears a sausage like. It has a double membrane. Its function or it is responsible for release of energy from the food in the form of ATP. Now let us talk about the Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus are stacks of flattened membrane sacs. They consist of tubules, vesicles and vacuoles. They are responsible for synthesis and secretion of enzymes and hormones. They also form acrosome of sperms. Next comes the ribosome. Ribosomes are small granules either scattered in the cytoplasm or attached to the outside of endoplasmic reticulum. They are single walled dense pericle bodies composed mainly of RNA. They are responsible for protein synthesis. Lysosomes. Lysosomes are membranous sacs budded off from Golgi body. They contain 40 different types of enzymes. They are responsible for intracellular digestion. They destroy foreign substances. They are also responsible for function of bones by digesting cartilages. Centrosomes. Centrosomes are located near the nucleus. They contain one or two centrioles. Centrioles are surrounded by microtubules. Function, they initiate and regulate cell division, form spindle fiber with the help of aster. Here I would like to mention that the nerve system or the nervous system do not have this cell part, do not have this particular cell organelle that is the centrosome. This is the reason why nervous system cannot divide. Now let us talk about plastids. Plastids are present only in a plant cell. They are double membraned proteinaceous matrix containing DNA. Disc-like structure called thylakoid contains chlorophyll. Functions, they are chiefly responsible for imparting colors to the flower and fruits and responsible for the process of photosynthesis and they also store starch. Next comes the nucleus. Nucleus is the largest cell organelle. They are mostly spherical and dense. They contain network of thread-like structures called chromatin which contains DNA. Function, they are involved in cell division, they regulate cell function and most importantly they contain chromosomes who are the bearers of hereditary units called genes. Next comes the nucleolus. Nucleolus are one or more round shaped nucleoli inside the nucleus. Function, they participate in protein synthesis by forming uh, RNA. They also store RNA. They form as well as store RNA. They also dictate ribosomes to synthesize protein. Next comes the chromatin fiber. The network in resting stage of the nucleus condenses into chromosomes during cell division. They are made up of DNA threads. Function, they carry hereditary informations of the genes. The next two parts, that is vacuoles and granules, are the non-living ones and are important in their own way. Vacuoles are responsible for storing water, food pigments and waste product. Granules, starch, that is in case of plant cell, and glycogen, in case of animal cell, and uh, um, fat containing granules serve as um, food for the cell. Now that we know about the cell components, let us study about the plant and the animal cell in details. Both plants and animal cell have the same basic structure. They contain the cell wall, the cytoplasm, um, nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, uh, Golgi body, mitochondria and ribosome. However, there are some basic differences between the two. 
let us look into the cell characteristic of a plant cell. Usually in case of plant cell, they have a distinct outline. Like larger, the, the plant cell are usually larger with distinct outline. Uh, they have a defined cell wall made up of cellulose. Cytoplasm is not so dense. The vacuoles are prominent and they may be one or more in number. Usually they contain plastids. Animal cells, they are usually smaller with less distinct boundaries. Uh, they basically have no cell wall. The like cell wall is absent in case of animal cell. Uh, cytoplasm is dense uh, with more granules. Vacuoles, if any, are small and temporary and they do not contain plastics. Now, let us learn a little more about the protoplasm. The term protoplasm have been used by the biologists for a long period of time. By this, they mean the living substance in an organism. Now, this living substance or the protoplasm is contained in the cells. The living substance is described as the translucent fluid. Translucent, translucent substances are those that are semi-transparent. For example, the glass windows that we have in our school. So the protoplasm or the living substance is described as a translucent fluid, somewhat colorless, grayish or brownish in color. The chemical composition of protoplasm is very complex. It varies a little from one cell to another. Although the common elements included in the composition of the protoplasm are uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, um, nitrogen, sulfur, iodine and phosphorus. These elements are in the form of specific composition such as water, uh, protein, carbohydrate, fats and mineral salts. Now, the question arises, how do we define the cell? Like mentioned previously, cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. But now that we know about the protoplasm, we will modify the definition. Cells are the basic structural building block of living organism consisting of protoplasm enclosed by a cell membrane. In addition to it, there will be cell wall in plant cell, also having a nuclear membrane or without it. I repeat, cells are the basic structural building block of living organism consisting of protoplasm enclosed in a cell membrane. In addition to it, there will be cell wall in case of plant cell having a nuclear membrane or maybe without it. Now, let us look into some examples of the cellular activities for fulfilling the needs of the organisms as a whole. Number one, all organisms grow due to the growth in size and increase in the number of cells. Second, repair of any injury or regeneration of, of a lost part is due to the cell division, namely mitosis. Regeneration. What is regeneration? It refers to the formation of new animal or new plant tissue. For example, regeneration of tail in, in, in case of a lizard. Next, movement of body is due to contraction of the cells or the cellular parts. For example, we see animals walking, running, swimming, flying and doing various other activities. Now, how do these activities take place? It is because of the contraction of the muscle cells. The drooping of leaves of the sensitive plant on touching and then their subsequent recovery is also due to the activity of cells. It is due to the activity of cell at the base of the leaves. There are also other activities like uh, closing and opening of the stomata, uh, bending movement of roots uh, towards the water or gravity, uh, photolytic effect that is movement of the stems um, towards the light or geotropic um, movement all these movements are brought about due to the cellular activities point number five circulation of blood 
uh, talk about the circulation of blood or movement of any other fluids uh, which includes hormones now these movement of the fluids or circulation of the blood are through forces which are uh, which are set by the contraction of muscles of the heart or other parts uh, point number 6 respiratory gases respiratory gases like oxygen uh they are trans uh, or carbon dioxide they are transported from the lungs to the other parts of the blood by blood cells next point number 7 protection uh the body protects itself from diseases germs through wbc or white blood cells uh let us recall the other name of wbc or white blood cell it is leukocyte so leukocytes or the white blood cells devour the germs are produce antibodies anti toxins to kill them or to neutralize their effect then uh, let us take some other example uh, we see we hear we smell taste or feel the sensation of uh, touch pain heat cold etc through our sensory cells how is it possible it is because of the brain the brain orders muscles to control uh, a gland to secrete through its cell which commonly we call as response then uh, we maintain our body heat by cellular activity and we cool it when hot by uh, sweating from skin gland cell so see everywhere we are seeing the activities of cell and the role they play uh, next all organisms produce their young ones through the activity of cell uh gametes involve the egg and sperm uh then uh, light is trapped by the green leaf cells to produce food now the mango seed produces a mango plant and a hen's egg produces a hen and similarly the transmission of parental feature uh, from the parent to the offspring that is to the young ones is also dependent on what the germ cells carry okay so now let us have a quick recall of the chapter um so by now we know that um, all plants and animals are made up of cells every organism start as a single cell then we again come to the cell theory uh, what does the cell theory states it has three main points uh, first cell is the unit of structure of all living things second cells develop from pre existing cells third the cell is the unit of function of all living things then we know that um, all cell consist of cell membrane um, cytoplasm and nucleus uh, plant cells have an extra rigid cell wall uh, made of cellulose um, and they may also contain one or two large vacuoles cells are often specialized in their shapes to carry out different functions cell membrane is selectively permeable whereas the uh, the cell wall is freely permeable uh, then uh, ribosomes are the sites of protein so protein synthesis mitochondria produces atp or energy uh, golgi apparatus produces secretion and um, lysosome destroys foreign substances plant cells have a variety of plastids then a uh, nucleus contains genes and it controls the activities of the cell this of this chapter i have the book with me you all are not having it so that won't be a problem i want you all to take a pen and a copy and take down the notes when and where required please take down the notes for your convenience i'll be repeating the question as well as the answers twice please keep a note let us start with the first question the first question is robert hooke discovered cells but not protoplasm do you agree with this statement give a reason i repeat robert hooke discovered cells but not protoplasm do you agree with this statement give a reason so students now we know the difference between a cell and a protoplasm what is a cell cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life we also know that the we and the old cells are continuously replaced by the new cells so what does this mean the cell can be both living as well as dead 
but protoplasm is the living matter of the cell so robert hooke first invented cell from a thin slice of bottle cork bottle cork that means it is not a living cell so he only invented cell but it was leven hooke who had discovered the protoplasm protoplasm is the living matter of the cell i repeat robert hooke first invented cell from a thin slice of bottle cork but it was leven hooke who had first discovered the protoplasm now we come to the second question what is the cell theory who propounded it and when i repeat what is the cell theory who propounded it and when we we know about it right now that there are three major points in the cell theory the first point says that the cell is the structural unit of life second one cell is the fundamental unit of life and third cells exist from pre existing cells i repeat cell is the structural unit of life cell is the fundamental unit of life and cell exist from pre existing cells we come to the second part of the question who propounded it and when the cell theory was propounded in the year 1839 by schwann and schleiden i repeat cell theory was propounded in the year 1839 by schwann and schleiden let us come to the next question it is said that the protoplasm cannot be analyzed chemically why i repeat it is said that protoplasm cannot be analyzed chemically why see the chemical composition of protoplasm is very complex it differs from one cell to another protoplasm is the living part of the cell but it ceases to be protoplasm when it is removed from the organism this is the reason why protoplasm cannot be chemically analyzed i repeat the composition of protoplasm is very complex and it differs from one cell to another protoplasm is the living matter of the cell but it ceases to be protoplasm when it is removed from the organism this is the reason why protoplasm cannot be chemically analyzed now let's look into the next question mention any three differences between a living cell and brick in a wall i repeat mention any three differences between a living brick a living cell and a brick in a wall see we all know this is a very easy question cell is living whereas brick is non living cell contains cell organelles whereas brick uh, does not contain cell organelle in case of cell a lot of exchange activity occurs like uh, oxygen or carbon dioxide is transported from one cell to another but we observe no such activity in case of brick next every cell has a specific life span for example the life span of our rbc or erythrocyte is 120 days but we see nothing like this when it comes to the brick i repeat the difference between the cell and the brick cell is living whereas brick is non living cell has cell organelle brick has no cell organelle in cell we see certain exchange activities between two or more cells in case of brick we observe nothing not nothing like this cells have their own life span whereas brick uh, th there is no certain life span for a brick cell now let us come to the next question okay so this is a structured question let's see which 
parts of a cell are concerned with the following so this is a question from the cell organelles part okay number 1 liberation of energy two synthesis of protein three transmission of hereditary characters from parents to offspring i repeat the question which parts of a cell are concerned with the following first liberation of energy second synthesis of protein third transmission of hereditary characters from parents to offspring for liberation of energy we know the cell organ organel concerned is the mitochondria next is the synthesis of protein the site of synthesis of protein is the cytoplasm and the cell organel who is chiefly responsible for this particular function is the ribosome and transmission of hereditary characters from parents to offspring this function is performed by the nucleus so liberation of energy mitochondria synthesis of protein ribosome transmission of hereditary characters from parents to offspring is the nucleus now let us see the next question recollect certain colors in plants name the plant and its part where the particular color is found what do you call the cell organelles which contain pigments i repeat recollect certain colors in plants name the plant and its part where the particular color is found what do you call the organelles that contains pigment see plants appear to be green why because it contains a pigment called chlorophyll this chlorophyll absorbs the red and the blue light and reflects the green light this chlorophyll is present in the thylakoid of the plants but not all leaves uh, we see are green in colors in color there are certain plants whose leaves are red in color or are 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 of some other colors why is there a difference this is because of the difference in the pigment they contain like green plants contain chlorophyll in them plants containing uh, like having red leaves or some other colored leaves have uh, this thing have uh, pigments like uh, carotenoids or anthocyanins in them we will learn about these pigments in the next chapter now we come to the next question list any five features found in plant and animal cells i repeat list any five features found both in plant and animal cell this is a very easy question you know the answer to this see both plant and animal cells have a selectively permeable membrane we have seen it that both the plant cell and the animal cell is having plasma membrane which is selectively permeable then both the plant and the animal cell have ribosome they have mitochondria they have endoplasmic reticulum they have golgi apparatus so you can add on a lot of points for this you can add more than 5 points for this particular question now we come to the so there is no point of repeating it i straight away come to the next question the next question says do you think the cells of an elephant would be larger than the cells of a rat explain briefly i repeat do you think the cells of an elephant would be larger than the cells of a rat explain briefly see this is a very tricky question and many of us uh, may go wrong but pay attention to this see the cells of rat and elephants are similar because they are animals animal cell have the common cell like the generalized cell that we have studied uh, there is no difference between the cell um, in in case of elephant and that of a rat just because an animal is bigger in size doesn't mean the cell size is bigger it means the number of cell is more in comparison to that of rat in case of elephant i repeat the cells of rat and elephant are similar 
just because an animal is bigger in size does not mean the cell size is bigger it only means the number of cells is mo is more in case of the bigger animal than in the smaller animal see we'll now go to the next question it is a differentiate question and it has more three questions attached to it differentiate between the following pair of terms number 1 protoplasm and cytoplasm 2 nucleolus and nucleus 3 centrosome and chromosome i repeat differentiate between the following pairs of term number 1 protoplasm and cytoplasm 2 nucleolus and nucleus 3 centrosome and chromosome first we will discuss the difference between the protoplasm and the cytoplasm protoplasm is the content of the cell including the cell membrane cytoplasm and cell nucleus content of the cell means the what the cell comprises of so the uh, protoplasm comprises of the cell membrane cytoplasm and the cell nucleus whereas cytoplasm is the jelly like substance surrounding the nucleus it is the jelly like substance surrounding the nucleus within the cell membrane cytoplasm contains the cell organelles like the mitochondria the ribosome uh, golgi apparatus etc i repeat protoplasm is the content of the cell including the cell membrane cytoplasm and the cell nucleus whereas cytoplasm is the jelly like substance surrounding the nucleus within the cell membrane and it contains the cell organelles now we'll go to the next question the next question is differentiate between nucleolus and nucleus nucleus as we know it is the main part of the cell it is because of this nucleus we call the cell a living cell whereas nucleolus it is just a part of the nucleus itself i repeat nucleus is the main part of the cell and nucleolus is the part of the nucleus itself now we'll go to the next differentiate between centrosome and chromosome so centrosome is a cell organ we all know it it is responsible for cell division uh, and the nervous system do not have this uh, centrosome this is why it cannot divide so centrosome is a cell organelle um, and it is responsible for the cell division or division of cells whereas chromosomes are highly condensed coiled chromatin fiber present inside the nucleus i repeat chromosomes are highly condensed coiled chromatin fibers present inside the nucleus so centrosome is the cell organelle present inside the cell and it is responsible for the division of cell chromosomes are highly condensed coiled chromatin fiber present inside the nucleus now we come to the next part state the major function of the following parts in a cell plasma membrane ribosome lysosome mitochondria and golgi apparatus i repeat state the major function of the following parts in a cell plasma membrane ribosome lysosome mitochondria and golgi apparatus so we'll start with the plasma membrane we know plasma membrane it is present in the outermost uh, outermost part of the animal cell its function it regulates the entry of certain solutes and ions and it helps in maintaining the shape of the cell i repeat it regulates the entry of certain solutes and ions and it maintains the shape of the cell now we come to the next part function of ribosome okay so ribosomes are made up of rna we know that they are single walled dense spherical bodies who are which is made up of rna and their chief function is they are responsible for 
protein synthesis. Next function of lysosome. Lysosome we call lysosome as the suicidal bag of the cell. It is this cell organelle which helps the cell to die. Like after their lifespan, they they have all cells have a certain lifespan. Uh, so it is lysosome which helps the cell to die. It engulfs itself. Function of lysosome. It is responsible for intracellular digestion. Uh, and when cell is old or injured, they rapidly destroy the organelles, like I mentioned. And it destroys foreign substances. So I repeat, lysosome is responsible for intracellular digestion, destroys foreign substances, and when the cell is old or injured, they rapidly destroy the cell organelles. We come to the remaining questions. How many chromosome pairs are found in human cells? I repeat, how many chromosome pairs are found in human cell? The answer to this is 23 pairs. That means total 46 chromosomes are present in the human body. Next question. Why are the cells generally of a small size? I repeat, why are the cells generally of a small size? We already have discussed about it. See, we, like I have mentioned before that cells are very small, microscopic. Uh, study of cell would not have been possible if uh, microscope would not have been invented. So, uh, but there is a reason behind it for the cells being small. What is the reason? Cells are so little or cells are so microscopic so that they can maximize their ratio of surface area to volume. I repeat, they are little or they are small so that they can maximize their ratio of surface area to volume. Why? Because they need to be able to get the nutrients in and the waste out quickly. So cells are so little because uh, like this the, the size the little size enables them to maximize their ratio of surface area to volume uh, because they need to be able to get the nutrients in and the waste out quickly next question what is the name of the chemical substance which constitutes the genes I repeat what is the name of the chemical substance which constitute the genes the answer to this is DNA. I repeat, the answer is DNA.